Wow. I, we were watching, we didn't get the sound, but we got the uh, image. <coughs> it's so exciting. To, there we were, in, yeah. right in Colorado. Yeah. And we were shooting in a house that had roosters, um, <laughs> peacocks wandering around the front lawn. Yeah, peacocks, wildlife right chickens. outside. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was perfect. Um, you know, it, it was an extremely difficult shoot from the point of view of what my character and Aiden's character were going through, because they were going through some real moments of hell. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when I first started rehearsing with Aiden, I said, where do you get all this pain from? And he said, I don't know. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's always smiling. I, mean, me, I admit it. I admit that, you know, it's right underneath the surface of my skin, you know, all of the broken hearts in my life and et cetera. And I say that with a sense of humor. But Aiden blew my mind. He's one of the happiest people I'd ever met. And here he was playing this guy who was tormented, yeah. just tormented that he lost his mother and that he wasn't getting along with his grandmother and that life wasn't going his way at all. Yeah, um, no, and that's and that's the funny thing about this, which I think is what made Aiden perfect for the second half of the movie when the character really starts making an effort yeah. to live again because that is Aiden, like the happy guy who smiles and is so charming. Because yeah. a lot of people, you know, seeing the beginning of the movie because we did have a preview and a test screening for the film before it was, you know. Which I wasn't invited to. Because we wanted her to see it when it was at its greatness. I still haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> but you trust in the fact. By now, you should trust me and go, I, I only put out good stuff. Yeah. So I want to make sure I do right by you. I think the script alone is wonderful. And and your work with the camera, as you can see in the trailer, is, is wonderful. Um, you know, with any independent film, we need to find our home. You know, we don't have um, with these studios you work for as an intern, Paramount, Warner Brothers, yeah. and what Universal. Was it? Universal. We don't have their automatic, um, you know, distribution, um, yeah. promotion, da 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 da. So, however, I was the uh, anomaly back in 1986, 87 to get uh, a very low budget film all the way to the Oscars with, with Anna. So I, I know it can be done. Um, but I think that this is an amazing story. The people I've talked to who have seen it uh, tell me that they cried, that they were very moved, and uh, that it was very real. Now somebody, I, because I've been playing the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, reel on my Facebook page, quite a few comments have been coming in left and right. And, and a number of men have said, oh, this is way too close to home. Yeah, <laughs> it's been interesting to see how emotional men have gotten, which has been great. Yeah, yeah. women and men too yeah, have sure. all related. And usually, when you have these kind of stories, it's more women who go out and see them. But what I wanted to do when I did write this is I wanted something that everyone can relate to. It can be universal in that fact. And I think it's funny that you say that because I've been getting the same thing with a lot of guys being like, "This looks intense. This looks really good. Like I would go see it." And most guys aren't into a movie like this. Yeah. But I think there's something in it for everybody, and that's mm -hmm. and that's why uh, that's why um, when I wrote the script, I made sure to include things that we as men can relate to, not just females. Right, you right. know, from the female perspective. So let me ask you some questions. When you were 10 years old, who was your favorite filmmaker? Who did you idolize? Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Oh, I and I still idolize him. I I think he's one of the most exceptional filmmakers that we have because he has found a way to incorporate an artistic view also into a business aspect. A lot of times you have young filmmakers who want to just be so crazy artistic, but they forget that people have to go see these movies. That their movies aren't made for them and their parents to see. It's made for a whole audience. And Steven Spielberg, I feel, still has a way of to bring his own take on things, his own artistic vision, but make it unique universal and, and entertaining for everybody to enjoy. And so he's mixed business with creativity in a way that I don't think any other filmmaker besides probably James Cameron, who's mixed technology and film in a way that makes everybody want to go see his movies, than any other filmmaker out there. And I hope one day that I can be, you know, considered in the circle of greatness that he is now one day to say that I've mixed my creative visions with entertainment. Because I really make movies so that for people, for people to go see and experience 
experience and love it. I don't make my style of filmmaking doesn't have an artistic value where it's like, okay, you have to really like his type of filmmaking. You know, you like genre, like genre, or like you know, he's a horror filmmaker, or you have to like like how he moves the camera all over the place. It's really like you can't. You go there and you just you enjoy the story and you enjoy the visuals. Well, it's a character-driven film. Yeah, no, and I think all of my work will be character-driven because I just love. Um, I love to like when the actors do it all and the, the camera just assists them and tells the story and just watches. And, and when we were on set, we did a lot of that. I would let the camera just roll as you guys just at the, at the end of the moment, you guys had a post moment that we were able to capture. And I think that's why a lot of the people were like, it's so real. Because they got to see, it wasn't chopped up so quick that, you know, you see one thing, you go to the next thing, you go to the next thing before people can really connect. I held the camera on you guys for a while. I didn't just go from you to Aiden, you to Aiden, you to Aiden, back and forth. I let us connect with you, see what was going on in your eyes and in your expressions. And I think that's lost in a lot of modern day films where they're trying to cut these movies down to 80 minutes or whatever, and they're just going back and forth. You never can connect with the actor anymore. And so um, my, I, you know, I love when you can just watch a person and just feel like, you know, that they're you and then you feel what they're going through and I think that's only established when you let the camera relax for a minute and just watch what's happening. Well said. Yeah. Um, so I'm still on my, you know, who's Justin Chambers track. Okay. Um, next to Steven Spielberg, give me three filmmakers you like. Uh, Danny Boyle. Okay. James Cameron. Um... And the the last spot kind of switches all the time, depending on my favorite movie of the year. So I would say I don't have I don't have another one, but okay. I just I like Danny Boyle's versatility. I think mm -hmm. he's great with how versatile he is with the types of movies he does. And then I love James Cameron's just I mean Titanic's one of my favorite movies oh, of all I time. Oh, I cried, cried. I I love it. I went to see it in 3D. It was phenomenal. Um, it's like I never saw it before, and every time I see it, it's like I never seen it before. So um, I love that film, and I love how he just has a way of just getting people in the seats and just taking you on a, an experience. You know, Avatar is another one of my favorite films. You know. Um, I think with James Cameron, he just has a way of pushing our technology forward. It's like he makes the stuff he shoots with, and I think that that's incredible. But above all else, uh, Steven Spielberg. And Jurassic Park was the film that made me want to become a filmmaker. Well, Martin Scorsese is my favorite director. Uh, another excellent filmmaker. Um, well, um, you, to me, are sort of um, a workaholic. <laughs> I mean, I would have to practically make a, I would have to, you know, way in advance book you for two hours of your time to come to my house to work with me on the character uh, <laughs> because you were busily in all these meetings of your production company mm -hmm. right and so I would say that your right brain and your left brain are fairly well balanced and can I defend the workaholic because I get that a lot but I feel like at the young age that I am I have to work harder than the next guy I mean you throw a rock and you hit somebody in this business and at the time I mean I still don't I don't have any representation no managers no agents no anything so I would go to the, I would have to read up on how to do all this stuff I would have to call people to ask for advice take meetings you know lunches and stuff to learn because I didn't have anybody that was over my shoulder being like this is what you need to do this is the decision you to make. I had nobody to go to when I was meeting you for the first time besides a couple of teachers and advisors and I was like I'm meeting my first movie star to be in my movie how do I how do I convince her to believe in me you know so I feel like I work so hard because of the fact that as of right now besides me and my two partners and your mom a, my mom of course met, yeah, yeah and she that. and uh, my mom has been a huge support in all of this you know she's really the, the person that just goes keep going I mean her thing her her repayment for taking me to all the film festivals when I was young and everything is to go to the Oscars one day and so Aww. I was like I was like that seems like a fair deal for all the work you put into my oh, that's career. great I got to bring my mom to the Oscars she wore dark glasses I remember <laughs> Jack Nicholson came across the the aisle this clock is saying all sorts of weird times but I imagine you guys will say something when it's over <laughs> my, my mother um yeah, she drank vodka, you know. And so she had dark glasses on, and Jack Nicholson came across the aisle and said, Mrs. Kirkland, your daughter is absolutely brilliant or something. And my mother was so impressed that Jack Nicholson, you know, came over just to introduce himself to her, you know. I knew him yeah. from many social events and both being friends of Bob Dylan and whatnot. Um, but uh, 
yeah, the Oscars is quite something. I would say 1988 so far is the best year of my life because, um, because there I was at the Oscars, and uh, and I won the Golden Globe and the Independent Spirit Award, and I also in in my church, the Church of the Movement of Spiritual and Awareness, I got what's called my Soul Initiation, and mm -hmm. uh, so the whole year I was just out of my body, high in ecstasy and bliss. I just, in fact, I was like you. You were saying before the show began that you're very thin because of the nervous energy. Yeah. I was like 120 pounds. Yeah. I was very thin, but it looked great in all the all the <laughs> films. You know. Why crevice? Actually, the name came, it's funny that you asked, and I was really young, I used to make video games with my friend, and we made this video game called What Lies Beneath the Crevice, and at the time there was like EP games and stuff, and we're like, we need a company to put this, you know, game under, and I just all of a sudden was like, why not Crevice Entertainment? And ever since then, because right after we did the game, I did a movie, and it just stuck, and now some odd, what has it been, like, that was 1998, or so it's like... 14 years later, 13 years later, it's yeah, now an established company making its first feature film debut, you know? Uh, it's crazy. I mean, how things just come and just, you know, stay with us. So, Well, um, I've been here with Justin Chambers tonight, and uh, I love West Hollywood, and I love that you came from Northridge. Northridge. Northridge to be with me tonight. Yeah. And sitting in the studio is Will Alexander, my other producer, and um, Karina... Karina Diaz. Associate, or co producer. She's a co producer. Oh, yeah. I'm the associate producer. You're the associate producer. She's a and, producer. And Brianna, and your beautiful girlfriend. Yes, Brianna, my love. Uh, and, and of course, Kurt and Desmond. And hello out there, Raul and Yvette.